So in this problem, we're told that an exceptional standing jump would raise a person 0.8 meters off the ground. To do this, what force must a 68 kilogram person exert against the ground? Assume the person crouches a distance of 0.2 meters prior to jumping, and thus the upward force has this distance to act over before he leaves the ground. So we have this person here, and we know they have a mass of 68 kilograms. And so what's gonna happen is they're gonna start here, they're gonna crouch down, 0.2 meters, and then they're going to jump 0.8 meters in the air. And so what we're trying to find is the force they're going to have to exert in order to make this jump. So this is going to be broken down into basically three main parts. The first one's going to be a kinematics problem. The second part's going to be a kinematics problem. And then the third part is where we actually solve for the forces. So let's go ahead and understand the first part. So the first part, what we're trying to find is the velocity at which the person is going to jump off the ground with. So basically, so think about it. So at the first interval, they're going to crouch down. And then at that point, they're going to jump with some initial velocity all the way to the top. And so the interval we're trying to find is from the point where they're crouched down all the way to the their velocity at the beginning of that interval to where they jump. So hopefully that makes sense. So uh, we're going to solve kinematics. So I always like to write out my given and then my kinematic variables. Uh, we're doing delta y because I imagine we're working in the y direction here. Just on a graph, you can imagine it like that. So that's why we have delta y. We have initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. So starting with our delta y, if you imagine when they're crouched down, they're going to jump up 0.8 meters. So we know their change in y is 0.8 meters. Uh, it's positive because it's going upwards. And then their initial velocity in this interval is what we're trying to find. So the velocity that they leave the ground with, that's what we want. Uh, v is going to be the velocity at the end of this interval, and we're setting this interval at the end to be at their max point. So wherever they reach is the highest point, right, because they jump 0.8 meters. So V is going to be 0 meters per second. The reason this is is because when you reach your maximum point, your velocity is always 0. Uh, and then, so that's that. Uh, acceleration is going to be the acceleration due to gravity, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The negative just indicates it's downwards. Uh, and then we don't know the time, but we won't need it. And so notice we have three kinematic variables, and we have the one we want to solve for. So if you remember from kinematics, uh, your main formulas, the one we're going to use is this one right here. So V equals V sub 0 plus 2A times delta Y. So if we want to use this equation, it's really just a matter of plugging it in and solving for our variable we want. So V sub 0 squared equals V squared minus 2A delta Y. All I did was move that to the other side. Uh, and then you would just square root. So V equals the square root of V squared minus 2A delta Y. All, right, all I did was get rid of that square. And now we just want to plug in. So 0 squared is still 0. All right, so we have minus 2 times minus 9.8 times 0.8. Right, so just plugging in delta Y, plugging in acceleration. Now let me go ahead and plug this in. 2 times 9.8 times 0.8. Square root this value. Obviously, the minus signs cancel. And you'll get the initial velocity here is going to be 3.95, or let's say 3.96 meters per second. So keep in mind what this value is. This is the velocity at the end of our crouching. So after we've crouched down two meters, but what we're leaving the ground with. And so the next part of this problem, we're going to do another kinematics uh, problem, but we're going to solve for a different interval and a different value. So for this interval, right, so writing down all my variables again, what we're going to be solving for is the acceleration during uh, the, the acceleration that they use in order to get the force. So basically the acceleration over this 0.2 meter interval. That's what we're going to be solving for. So we want to solve for that. Keep in mind it's over the 0.2 meter interval. So they're going to be rising 0.2 meters and they're going to be accelerating with some acceleration. We don't know what it is, uh, but that's what we're trying to find. So the delta y is 0.2 meters because we're going upwards. The initial velocity in this interval is zero. So keep in mind that this value is zero. And the reason that is is because at the bottom, right, so you want to imagine it, so they start in their normal standing, then they're going to crouch down 0.2 meters. So at this point is where we're starting our interval. Then they're going to go up 0.2. But at the beginning of that, their velocity is zero. They're not moving. So, or yeah, so their velocity is zero. Uh, because right, they're starting from rest before they jump up. So zero meters per second for that. 
And then what is the velocity at the end of this interval? That's exactly what we just solved for. So keep in mind, this velocity was at the end of this 0.2 meters before they, right before they jump. So right before they leave the ground. So this was that. So the final velocity of this interval here is the velocity, the initial velocity of our other interval, this one, right? So the first interval, the initial velocity is the same as the final velocity for this, right? Because this was at the end of the point two, and then, or this was at the beginning of the point two, and this is the end of the point two. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but now that we have these in, this information, what we can do is solve for our acceleration over this interval. So uh, using the same formula, v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta y, we can solve for this acceleration. So uh, plugging things in, right, we want to solve for y, so we have v squared minus v sub zero squared equals 2a delta y. You would just divide by 2 delta y. And that will give you your acceleration there. So a equals v squared, which was 3.96 squared, minus 0 squared, that value is still 0, divided by 2 times delta y, which is 0.2. So you have uh, 3.96 squared divided by 2 times 0.2. That gives you an acceleration of 39.2 meters per second squared, since we're dealing with acceleration. So now that we know the acceleration over this interval here, right, this is what they're going to use to generate the force, right, because you need the acceleration. So what we're going to do now is uh, do the third part of the problem, which basically involves solving for the force. And so what we're going to do here is sum the forces. So uh, if we draw the free body diagram here, we know the only force that's going to be impeding our motion here, or that's going to be in this, is the force due to gravity, right? So that's going to be stopping us from going up. And so if we sum the forces in the y, we know the sum of the forces uh, equal ma. So the only force that's slowing us down is mg, but we're also going to be pushing up with some force, right? We, that's what we're trying to find, the force that we use to jump in the air. So that's obviously going to be pointing upwards because it's pushing us up. And then we have the force countering it, which is mg. And so we know the sum of these forces equal its mass times acceleration. And so... Uh, since I chose upwards to be positive, so f of p, or the acceleration was upwards, so it's positive. That means upwards is positive here. So f of p is positive while you minus the mg because it's going the opposite direction. And so we know the sum of these forces, these two forces added up, have to be equal to your mass times acceleration, right? Because this is the net force. So basically, this should tell you that your fp is equal to ma plus mg. And so if you factor out the m, you'll get your mass multiplied by your acceleration plus gravity. And so really, this is just a matter of plugging it in now. So your mass was 68, your acceleration was 39.2 plus 9.8. And yeah, so you have 39.2 plus 9.8 times 68. And you'll find your f of p is equal to 3,332. And then obviously measure force in newtons. So the force that our jumper jumps with in order to uh, go up these 0.8 meters is 3,332 newtons. Uh, and yeah, so just a rundown on how we solve this problem. We knew that if we could find the velocity at the end of this 0.2 meter interval, right, which is the beginning of the interval from him about to jump or leave the ground to reaching the top, we could solve for uh, that velocity there, right? So the initial velocity right before the jump and then with that information, we could go ahead and solve for the acceleration during the interval, since we know uh, during the 0.2 meter interval, right, which is what they use to generate the force. Uh, and then we could solve for the acceleration over that force where they generate an interval. And then with that, we just sum the forces. And we know the force that they're pushing off with is their mass times acceleration plus mg. And then it was just a matter of plugging it in and solving. And yeah, so this is your F of P answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.